What is up everybody? Scratch coming up with another Raid Shadow Legends video. We are currently on the test server guys and you know what? I've heard there's a new fish in town. If you guys feel that smell is the smell of BS. You know why? Because I've heard this so many times. Rip Tranda. This is the new king of arena. This champion is gonna end the reign of Tranda. This is gonna kill Tranda. And yeah, I feel like I've heard it way too many times and I gotta check this for myself to see if is for real this time around or no so we do have a new big fish in town everybody's talking about him everybody's saying he's the craziest damage dealer is gonna put tranda on the bench well i agree he's an absolute beast of a champion he deals so much damage that it makes my eyes bleed okay but i still don't think he's gonna put tranda on the bench and in today's video guys i'm gonna explain you why so we're gonna talk about Haprak. He looks amazing. It's a new addition to the game. He has some very solid skills. On the A1, attacks one enemy, places an extra hit if this attack is critical. On the A2, attacks all enemies, places an extra hit on targets with less than 50% HP after the first hit. Each hit will ignore 15% of the target's defense. Now, this skill right here has a 3.6 multiplier per hit. Is much higher than Tranda's, so he will deal more damage than Tranda with this skill, 100%, if you compare it with um, her A3, for example. His A3 places a 50% increased attack and a 30% increased crit rate on this champion for 3 turns, then grants an extra turn. So you start with this skill, move over to the A2, move over to the A1, and bang. The passive, Prince of Pride, whenever an ally is killed, instantly activates... The Scorn, which is the A2, will not put the skill on cooldown. This allows us to play with crazy things. Have a level 1 champion, go suicidal with him, he's gonna activate the Scorn, and then we're gonna get to use his skill again. So that can be pretty, pretty fun. Now, if you decide to build this champion with 70% crit rate and count on his A3, his passive is not gonna be that great. 70% crit rate is poof, very dangerous, okay? You're not gonna crit too much. So you still want to go and give him more crit rate if you want to play around with the passive. If there are multiple champions on the same team, the skill will be used only once, etc, etc. I have him built on a Savage and a Cruel set. Total stats, 29k HP, 7256 attack, 2000 uh, defense, 199 speed, 88 crit rate, 291 crit damage, no accuracy, no resistance because we don't need that. And how I mentioned... We can build this champion with less crit rate. That's definitely a big bonus for uh, for it because you can play around with the stats with giving him more attack, more crit damage, more speed, whatever you need. So these are the stats that I have on him. Masteries, I have offense and defense tree. On the offense tree, we went with tier 6 Helm Smasher, typical masteries for a, a nuker. We went on the defense tree because nothing is going to benefit us from the support tree except lasting gifts or a cycle of magic. So I feel like having the defense tree is a bit better. Now, if we're going to have a look at Randa, I have her built on a Savage and a Cruel set. Total stats, 7,272 attack. So we have like 1, 1, 5, 15 more attack than uh, on him. She's a bit slower. That doesn't matter anyway. 101 crit rate, 285 crit damage. So he has 6% more crit damage than Randa. And he deserves it because he doesn't need full crit rate. So we're going to give that to him. The damage, in, uh, the difference in stats is barely noticeable, okay? The damage won't get reflected out of such a small difference. That's one thing to, to keep in mind. Master is identical like he has them. So if we look uh, at her kit, attacks one enemy two times. That's it. Attacks one enemy, then attacks all other enemies. This skill is very, very unique in the game and it's very powerful. We do have two AoE attacks from Tranda, which allows us to play a bit safer. So if we gotta do a cleanup, she can do the cleanup with her second AoE. Forge Rhythm attacks all enemies. And if we don't stun, we place an extra hit. It's a bit conditional as well, but not as conditional as his skills. So that's Tranda. We have the attack... Uh, Aura for all battles. She has her passive, which doesn't really mean that much for Arena. Why do I think that this champion 
is not gonna end the reign of Tranda. His A1 places an extra hit if this attack is critical, depending on what teams you're attacking. And I'm talking about teams. I'm talking about Arena. I'm not talking about the busted Arena where you go and you farm all the teams that they're supposed to be in bronze and somehow they ended up in gold. I'm talking about doing Platinum Arena and actually fight strong teams that deserve to, to be called proper defenses for Arena, not debating teams, you know? If you're attacking a team like that, you're going to use the, the A2, then you're going to move over to the A1. Maybe they're so slow that they're not even going to take their turn. You're going to hit in reaction. So you're only going to get one hit from this skill because the second one needs to have a crit hit before in order to make sure he's going to get the second one. If you're attacking a strong affinity, you're only going to get one if you're going to weak hit. While with Randa, you're still going to get both of the hits regardless. So the second hit might allow you to don't have a weak hit, might allow you to don't hit reaction again. So that will give you damage. That can save you the fight. The A2 places an extra hit on targets with less than 50% HP. Now, when you're attacking a decent team in arena, you hit reaction, let's just say it like that, if you decide to go with a, a normal fast team. And what's going to happen? You're not going to take the champions under 50% HP. You might take the nuker under 50% HP with the first hit, but you're not going to take a Duchess, you're not going to take a Mitrala, you're not going to take a Lydia or even a Brogni or other champions under 50% HP if you're going to need uh, if you're going to hit reaction. So you're not going to get the second hit after. And that will leave you uncovered. You're going to have so much cleanup to do. That's my main argument with this champion. Conditional, conditional, rural hits harder than Tranda. He's conditional, way more conditional than this champion. I still think he is a beast, an absolutely amazing addition to the game, but he's definitely not gonna end the reign of Tranda. I like the whole idea on his kit. So what we're gonna do now, guys, we're gonna take them in to try them out a bit to see the damage difference. I know he does hit harder than Tranda, but I still wanna see a bit... Uh, the numbers and show you guys as well while we're talking a bit more about the champions and then we're gonna try them in arena as well so what we're gonna do guys we're gonna test the champions on floor 118 in the doom tower because if i'm going on the dragon tranda is gonna stun the waves and she's not gonna get a second hit because they have no resistance those champions there the waves so we're gonna test them here i have arbiter just to get more termiter not for increased attack because he does have another amazing pro he doesn't need an increased attack champion with him, which is absolutely amazing. Very good for Arena. And I'm going to show him what team I would love to use this champion if I would get him on my account. 100% I would use him there because he's just going to do so much better than uh, having in a Soulless or something else. So we're buffing and just check out this damage. It's absolutely insane. 123, 152, 164, 160 per hit, man. That's so powerful, so much damage out of this champion i definitely love having this champion in the game i cannot wait to pull him hopefully i'm gonna get him tomorrow with the double ancient event who knows get one get one free now i want to see what we can get out of his a1 i haven't checked the multipliers of that skill so i'm very curious to see what sort of damage he's gonna he's gonna do here with defense down we can have everything that we need you know I'm normally taking the champions on stage uh, 23 on the dragon, but because of Tranda, I cannot do that. So we're going to buff that crit rate to make sure we have 100% crit rate and just see with the A1 on this stag knight. 64k, 48k. So we had the Hammer Smasher proc and a non Hammer Smasher proc there. Plus is the damage RNG that we have on every single hit, on every single champion. Overall, is a pretty good damage out of that skill too. Can we manage to, to get another turn before we're getting wrecked by the enemy team? No, we're not. So let's bring in Tranda. We've seen his AoE attack is probably the hardest AoE skill in the entire game. The only champion that can compete with him is going to be Seer. And that's, that needs a lot of setup and for Arena it's not really going to work as good, you know. So if we're going to go in like that. We've seen the stats on the champions were very, very similar. I could use Tranda's aura here, because why not? That will be fair play, since he's using his uh, A3, increased attack, increased crit rate. That's another pro with Tranda. 
it can help you a lot of times in arena too if, if if you need it you can go without having the increased attack but then so you can you can do the same with uh, the new champion so let's go with this skill 133 100 uh, and something 93k he survived okay so we have one champion that survived in here not necessarily the biggest problem you can see the damage difference is pretty big it's probably a third so he hits harder than Tranda with a third of her damage which is they're very big numbers to to stay and think about it if we're gonna go again let's use this time around Tranda's a2 because we have two aoe attacks if the first one fails we're gonna be able to come in and clean with the second that's kind of like the whole idea you know and bang 190k 200 and something k there you guys are going to be able to see a bit the numbers better i just have too many things going on on the screen at the same time but that was pretty good if one fails the second one comes in play and this gives you a better safety you know like you know that you have a second aoe to count on and do the cleanup pretty quick don't wait for another turn don't wait to do anything crazy if we're gonna go with tranda's a1 here 37k 53k so he hits harder with the a1 as well by again almost by a third i would say if may a quarter to a third around there if we're gonna go again to use her a2 a3 sorry just to see if again we're gonna have champions surviving is that something that's happening all the time or we're gonna be able to to get him down now yeah so he survived again somehow seems like he just doesn't want to go down now we established this in terms of damage he is the ultimate king he's the goat okay let's try them in arena i'm not even gonna try necessarily tranda in arena now but what i want to do is try him in arena because he's the new champion i want to have some fun with him now for arena this will be kind of like the perfect team to run him into if you don't have a champion like him in here you're gonna use a solace because that's the best option after you have an increased defense from cfi while well, with him you don't need to have increased attack. That's why I really, really like the champion. And I feel like in a team like this, he will be perfect for Arena. So let's give it a go and see what we can get out of it. Unfortunately, we are on the test server. I don't have some of the best teams to, to fight. I cannot go against some of the best teams. But we're going to work with what we have, you know. So there we go. He didn't even bother to buff his, uh, his crit rate and attack. He was like, I don't need that for this. I'm going to wreck him without it, you know. That's kind of like what he said. If we're going to go here, I'm going to keep the same format and let's see what's going to happen. That's a bit, a bit no-no if he's not actually using his A3 first. Even though he might not need it 100%. I feel like, yo, G, use it because it is going to help you. You don't have 100% crit rate. Don't be overconfident, you know. But let's, let's do that on manual. So the damage is pretty nice though. He, he did tons and tons of damage. This, in my opinion, something like this would be the perfect team for him. Because he doesn't need increased attack. Why would I use, uh, I don't know, Arbiter in the same team? Better use Kaimar. Now if we're gonna go against a team like this. I'm actually gonna take him out, bring in Lady Kimi to make sure I can sleep that uh, Mitrala with my Kaimar. I do have champions on immunity, so I don't have like a, a million accuracy, unfortunately. So if we're gonna do that, now, if you would use Tranda instead, it's definitely not great to have uh, to have all that uh, accuracy on it because you can stun champions and that's, that's not good. What about with him? The good part is that you don't care about it. So let's just see what's going to happen now. Bang. So we hit a reaction, okay? Only one this time around. The second hit never procced on Brogni. We haven't killed him. If this was Stranda, she was going to wipe them out. That's one thing to keep in mind. Now, imagine if we were hitting reaction on Mitrala as well. We were going to have two champions to deal with. Maybe one of them was a warlord. The other one was a reviver, just as an idea. And either we were going to get locked, either somebody was going to revive. So we were going to be a bit, in, a bit in, a, in a pickle here. We weren't going to be able to, to rag them. That's why I still think that he's not going to end the reign of Stranda. He's going to have his own spot. Plus, another thing. I've been away for the last three weeks or so. I haven't done Arena probably for the last six weeks or so. And uh, I asked my clanmates, guys, how is Arena going? Anything changed? What are the champions that you're using the most in terms of lookers? 
And truly, a lot of them banished Tranda, but not for him, for Leorius. So he's not gonna banish Leorius either, just because he fits so nice in the meta at the moment. He's immune to, to the CC uh, debuffs. He has the unkillable, his void affinity. So overall, he's much better. Now, if you decide to play this champion on a go second team with, I don't know, Nacrit and the rest, yeah, you can, you can avoid having all these issues with him, not a problem. And probably you're gonna you're gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna play him like that. But it's much harder. A lot of you guys will need to have different champions in there. My whole point is that the way it is, is he's a solid champion, but I don't think he's gonna end the reign of Trond. I am curious to know what you guys think about it. So let us know in the comments down below. The next thing that I wanna do is play a bit around with his passive. Unfortunately, there are no hegemons around here. And I actually tried him against this dude. I know he's a bit faster. The problem was that he got slapped by Kaimar. Even though I had a champion to instantly remove the slip, his passive didn't come in place. So his passive completely got cancelled. So it doesn't work against a team like this. There are no hegemons here, unfortunately. So I cannot really try that. I'm just trying to see what sort of uh, team I can actually try and fight and pray for uh for the best you know what i mean hopefully we're gonna be able to do something here even though we have damn damn series or maybe we go against this it's gonna be hard for me to bring in a, a champion to keep him alive because the other one is not gonna die so I, I i don't i don't know if that makes perfectly sense to you or no but it's gonna be pretty hard to keep him alive like this if we would have had a hegemon on the on the enemy team it would have been a walk in the park but unfortunately, like this, we cannot uh, we cannot do anything about it. So let's just see what's going to happen. I'm even going to do this just to make sure we are keeping him alive. I'm not going to I'm not going to sleep them. OK, that just didn't fall for it. Maybe if I wasn't buffing, maybe she was going to fall for it like this. So I'm going to do this. OK, we got that Duchess down and somebody just kill him but leave him alive let's see okay so he killed an ally there we go bang and now he actually used the passive that's actually pretty good i wish it it would work as well with uh against kaimar if i have a jing one to instantly remove that uh, sleep but unfortunately it doesn't as an idea this will be pretty fun against hegemon teams i think it's gonna have some nice potential but that's kind of like what we can expect from this champion. Final conclusion, how I mentioned, I don't think he's going to bench Tranda just because of the pros and cons that each one of the champion has. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think, what's your opinion on the champion. And that was all for this video. Much love, appreciate all of you guys watching, and I'll catch you all soon in the next one. Peace.